So for this example I have two files, uh, a video which is the intro to Spongebob Squarepants I also have a SID file which I thought was Spongebob Squarepants but isn't. It's a very catchy tune though so I'm going to leave it in. I believe the music bar was by Max Hall. So the first thing I need to do is to split the video out into individual frames. For this I'm going to use FFmpeg with the following command. The dash i tells it the input file, it's called intro.mp4. I then tell it to do a certain amount of frames with the vframes command. In this one I'm going to go for about uh, 976 frames. Um, only because I've tested it before and this is roughly how many frames it was player can actually handle up to 1500 frames and then I give it an output file name. The percentage 04D tells it to use a sequential file name <coughs> using four decimal places. So now that's finished if we switch back to the folder we can see that there are now hundreds of PNG files uh, ready to be converted. This is where my first custom Python script called C64Eyes comes in. This takes every PNG in any given folder and converts them into Koala compatible images. The color limitations on multicolor mode for the Commodore 64 mean that there's only three unique and one background color per any character on the screen, the screen comprising of 40 by 25 characters. If we switch back to the folder now you can see that it's creating a .bin file for every image that it finds in the folder. This is probably the slowest part of the process. As you can see it takes a bit of time to process each frame so I'm going to skip this and we'll come back when it's nearly done. The next part is a second Python script that takes all those bin files in the folder and combines them into a REU image. Uh, as you can see some of the options here, it allows you to specify frames per second, whether you want the video to loop or not, which is stored inside the REU, and also a SID file. There are very strict restrictions on the SID file that you can import. It must be located at 1000 hex. Uh, the init must be at 1000 and the play must be at 1003. So I'm going to add in the spongebob.sid file that was in that folder then give it an output name. Originally I'm going to call it output.reu. This will then whiz through. This is a really fast command because it's literally just joining those files in and padding it out so that it's always exactly 16 meg otherwise you can't load it into vice properly. I haven't tested it on real hardware uh, I'm going to copy the output file over into where my REU test PRG is running from. And if I go back to CBM PRG Studio and run it, we'll see the results. So the player itself is fully compatible with a 1531 mouse plugged into port 1, I think, or a joystick plugged into port 2. As you can see, it plays quite nicely. Um, the B option allows you to switch on edge lighting I think is probably the, the correct term for it whereby the border will fill in with the, the most common color in the picture. Um, the plus and minus uh, adjust the frames per second or the speed that it's played back at. You can go up to 50 FPS which is obviously the Commodore 64's native for PAL uh, and you can go down very very slow. There's also a, a slider so you can drag back and forth completely random axis uh, and a play and pause button. I designed the player to look a bit like VLC, a fantastic movie player. Um, 
the menu pops up when you're using the mouse or the joystick and then vanishes two or three seconds after you stop moving the mouse so it doesn't get in your way it's not always on screen so now let's compare the original and the C64 version side by side Next we're going to check what it looks like on real hardware using the Ultimate 2 cartridge as the REU. Loading the REU file does take a little bit of time so I'm going to skip that for the sake of the video. Apologies for the awful clicking sound, I don't have a real 1531 mouse, so I'm having to use my joystick. Okay, thanks for watching.